Hello friends, this is regarding a case study, case study 5 about a newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes with high baseline HbA1c level. Mr. AB, 45 year old with newly diagnosed type 2 diabetes, visited clinic 6 months back with multiple risk factors like obesity, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. He was initiated with metformin with advice for lifestyle and diet modification. Recently again, he visited again as part of a routine checkup. His laboratory work showed following reports, HbA1c 8.5. EGFR 80, LDL 80, SDL 38, and triglycerides at 200 mg per day. He was on current medications were metformin 1000 mg twice daily, lisinopril 40 mg once daily, metoprolol extended release once daily, atorvastatin 40 mg once daily, and aspirin 75 once daily. Physical examination showed his BMI was 31, BP 120 by 70, and heart at 78. Evidence indicates that early intervention and achievement of glycemic control reduces the long-term risk factors, uh, long-term risk of microvascular and microvascular complication in type 2 diabetes. PDS demonstrated a legacy effect of early intensive therapy because the difference in CV events rate 10 years post-trial was apparently even though no difference in HbA1c levels between the intensive and conventional therapy. When metformin is not suitable and empagliflozin or linagliptin is being considered as an alternative first-line treatment, initial combination therapy may be considered to achieve target more quickly, particularly in patients with high baseline HbA1c level. Early combination therapy in type 2 diabetes makes clinical sense for several reasons. First, a meta-analysis demonstrated that early use of combination therapy significantly increases the likelihood of achieving the glycemic target of HbA1c less than 7 compared with metformin as a single therapy. For patients with HbA1c of more than 1.5 above goal at diagnosis, AD and ESD guidelines recommend first-line treatment with a dual combination at an, and an SGLT2 inhibitor as the first post-metformin treatment in patients with established CBD, CHF, or CKD. AMPA and LENA combination with complementary mechanism and pyotrophic benefit may be suitable option across a range of patients, including those with established ASCVD or high risk. Establish a heart failure or CKD due to, the, due to the tolerability of the combination in addition to the potential benefits of MPA on CV and renal outcomes and no increased risk of heart failure with either agent. According to study, early achievement of HbA1c goal of less than 7 with MPA lena could reach target HbA1c at 12 weeks compared to monotherapy. HbA1c decrement by MPA lena 25 by 5 has demonstrated an HbA1c reduction of 1.81% at HbA1c of, if, of HbA1c of more than 8.5 by 24 weeks in metformin treated group. The benefit on glycemic control were maintained at week 52 in metformin treated group and a higher percentage of patients achieving HbA1c of less than 7% were reported for combinations. The combination offers a suitable component strategy to achieve target HbA1c without increased risk of hypoglycemia and weight gain with improvement in overall lipid profile. A reduction in the incidence of genital infection associated with HbA2 has been reported when a DP4 inhibitor is added, perhaps because of a better glucose control, although other possible mechanisms may remain to be investigated. In summary, MPA and LENA combination provides robust HbA1c reduction and two to four times higher odds of patients reaching the goal HbA1c compared to individual agents with low hypoglycemic risk. Thank you.